Okay, I have a mess of electronics here. Uh, I'm just gonna run through a little demo of my current Arduino project. Um, first of all, the point of this project is to take a sensor reading every time I run water through my house. Um, I have a water tank that's buried outside. Uh, I'm in an area where we don't get city water. It's a little bit remote. You have two options. You can do well or you can bury a tank and then have it delivered. Um, and we have places that, that deliver water uh, up in Alaska. So uh, what I'm doing here is trying to figure out how I can gauge where in the usage of my thousand gallons that I have in my tank I currently am at before I'm, you know, uh, so I can determine how long it's going to take before I, I need to get it refilled. So this Arduino project, a couple of goals I had in mind. Uh, I needed to be able to take a sensor reading and read uh, how much water is being used. And I wanted to be able to do it anytime there's any kind of usage, figure out exactly how much is used, and then log it with a date and timestamp. And this way I can design kind of an internal web page that will show my data in useful ways and and uh, be able to like let me run reports on on how my usage goes what days of the month i use you know the most the least uh what's my average for every day that kind of thing so uh it was important for me to have this project read that data in those small portions and then send that off to the um internet somewhere and and i actually currently have a google cloud storage SQL server running that takes this data in and houses it so that I can attach a web page to it later. So um, to facilitate that, I have actually over here, I've got a Wi-Fi wi shield um, that connects to my Wi-Fi internet and, uh, and that's how I facilitate accessing the net and uploading the data. Um, on the breadboard here that I've got, I've also got an SD card um, reader that I've got plugged in and I've got an SD card in it. I've designed a config file um, and another file that saves the current values of the two meters. And I've got two meters here on the screen, which I'll explain in a second. But the uh, the config file and the save values file on the SD card, every time you lose power on the device, it will power back up and it will read uh, the current settings that I have for the device off of the SD card uh, every time it boots up. So uh, what's really cool is if I want to reconfigure this, like say I change my wireless router and I have a different router in the house or I change my wireless password because uh, somebody gets it or something like that. Um, I can change that password or any of those settings in my config file and then the next time the device boots up it would automatically read those settings in from the SD card uh, and that's pretty cool. Also when you lose power since every time it uploads the data that it has to the internet it also writes the values to the SD card if you lose power when it comes back on, you automatically get those values back on um, your your meter here. So you don't lose any any of its sensor data if there's a power, power failure or something like that. Also, it's kind of neat if there's some kind of an issue, uh, you can go back and, and pull that SD card out, set the values to something in the card file, and then put it back in and it would, it would set these meters to a, a specified value when it boots back up. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, having that SD card slot was important to me so that I didn't have to plug the whole works into a computer and reprogram it anytime I want to change uh, some of the basic settings that you know may need to be configurable. Um, so SD card slot, Wi-Fi shield is here. Um, you obviously can see the LCD here. Oh, there it goes. It's uploading to the internet right now. Writing values and it's done. And, um, and when it is done with that, it returns to the default screen. And some of the things on the default screen here is it says flow 0, 0.0 liters per minute. When there is water flowing through the sensor, which I don't have the sensor hooked up right now, um, but it's a it's a ge generic uh, water flow sensor, uh, works on a Hall effect. And uh, what the device does is it determines based on uh, the polling of that sensor, how, how much water is currently flowing through it in milliliters. And then to display it on the screen, I actually convert it to liters because that's a more useful uh, thing for me to read. So while water is moving through my house, I actually can see exactly how much per minute is going in liters per minute. Um, and then I, I'm also displaying the two meters that I have going. I have two of them, uh, 241 liters used and 211 meter, uh, liters used. 
Um, so that's that's pretty neat, and and uh, I can reset these independently. And they um, the, the this left hand most meter is actually the one that uploads to the internet. I don't have this one going. This is more of like a um, for like I took a shower. I want to see how much is is there. This is more of like an overall, this is uh, how much you've used since the last time you filled your tank kind of situation. Um, the last part of the project, which is really cool, is this rotary encoder uh, setup that I've, I've got going on here. I'm not using the ring encoder. I may do that later, or the ring LED ring graph. Um, I may do it later, but I haven't decided to do it yet. I, I'm not sure that I need it. But I, I do have a cool rotary encoder that has a... RGB uh, LED in it. I have another video out there that kind of showed me doing the basic setup of this before I integrated it into the project. Um, so what's really cool with it here is if I push the button on it, uh, it blinks over here a little blue color and then gives me some uh, new options on my LCD screen. And if I rotate it, uh, you can see it changes options and it's kind of cool because it when you do a user input, the encoder you know changes colors. Um, so I can scroll through these and obviously I've got a couple here that make perfect sense. Um, read config allows me to reread the config file off the SD card. So I don't have to power cycle the device. I could take the SD card out. I could edit the file, put it back in and then reread new settings in there. Um, trigger and upload. If I want to, you know, manually trigger the device to upload whatever its current value is to the website, I can do that too. Uh, if I scroll down here, I got reset meters. Um, what I can do is reset either of the two meters that I have going on. Um, if I uh, push on the push button here on my encoder and select the reset meters, it comes up with reset A or B. I can then also exit without doing anything. It takes me back to the main menu. Uh, so it's really neat to kind of scroll through all of this. The last is exit menu, which if I exit it, it goes out back to the main, the main screen where it just shows me the flow and and the current readings. One thing that I thought was really cool that I really like about this encoder is that uh, as I s scroll through these options, when I push the buttons, I have it, anytime there's something successful going on, it lights up green. Anytime there's like a, a no selected or something fails to happen, it will light up uh, red, which is kind of cool. I mean, it's silly, but cool. Uh, so I can scroll through these two uh, options here, reload the config, yes or no. If I decide to say no option, it blinks and then turns red, which is kind of cool to say I, I did no. Um, so that's pretty much where the project stands right now. Pretty excited to start using this. I need to stick it into a, uh, a you know whole overall project box and get the wiring uh, a little bit more permanent. But um, once I do that, I'm gonna start using this and then write more of like a website portion to help me out in terms of um, seeing what kind of data or you know I can get for water water usage. So uh, thanks for watching the video. Subscribe if you like. I'll put some more things out here and there. Um, thank you. Bye.